Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning to our uh, Sunday School Hour. It's uh, good to meet again this morning um, under maybe different circumstances than what we're normally used to, but uh, I hope and trust that we can uh, enjoy our fellowship together, that you can have a good morning, and that you can be inspired by uh, our time together this morning. I have a few verses that I'd like to read or kind of discuss or read uh, before I before we get into the lesson text. There are verses that... Uh, have been a real comfort comfort to me over the past uh, little while as we've been going through this COVID-19 situation and uh, some maybe some trying times for all of us and maybe we have lots of questions and maybe don't quite understand what is going on around us but uh, we have to remember that God is in control and uh, there's some verses here in Psalms I'd like to read. The first one is in Psalms 91 verses 1 to 16. These verses uh, Nikita read to us last Sunday, and I just thought uh, they, were, they were a real encouragement to me, and I'd like to read them again this morning. So Psalms 91, it says, uh, He will dwell in the, shadow of the, in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from a fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will take, that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. For long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And uh, another verse in Psalms 57 verse 1 that I uh, uh, thought was very fitting as well, it says, uh, Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. And if we think of, uh, at the end of that verse there, if we think of the disaster um, that has passed, if we put maybe, if we just put the, the virus in that, in that spot there and uh, say that Jesus will, or that God will take refuge, or that we can take refuge in the shadow of his wings until this disaster has passed. Very, very comforting verse there in Psalms 57. Um, I'd also like to read uh, Psalms 46 verses 1 and 2. Um, it says, uh, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, he will not fear, therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. So with these verses, I think uh, in Psalms, we can look to them um, when we go through t trying times. And I think we all have been through some very trying times here in the last uh, little while. And I just hope and trust that we can, that we can uh, realize that God is in control and that uh, he will watch over us. And uh, I just uh, hope that those verses were, were a comfort to you this morning. And uh, just a challenge to... Uh, to maybe read Psalms 91 maybe a couple times this week as you uh, as you go through this week and it'll hopefully uh, bring some uh, peace into your life. So uh, today's lesson is uh, is entitled A Just Servant and uh, it's taken from Isaiah 42 verses 1 to 9 and we all know what a servant is. It's someone who performs tasks for someone else and um, in uh, in the first four verses of this of Isaiah 42 the word justice is mentioned uh, three different times and uh, a lot of this whole passage is talking really about uh, Jesus coming back and uh, bringing just to this to this earth. I'd just like to go through some of the characteristics of, of Jesus as we go through these verses this morning. And if you look at verse 2, it says, uh, he, will, he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. And uh, I know oftentimes there's different leaders today. They want to draw their atten draw attention to themselves. They want to be in control. They want everyone to, uh, to look to them. And, and uh, they want to be noticed they want to be seen they want to be heard and that's totally different than how jesus uh is going to be when he comes back um 
if you look at uh, uh, being today's Palm Sunday, and if you look at that verse uh, where it talks about uh, the crowds at Jesus' triumphal entry, when they come in and they shout, blessed is the, is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, we realize here that the crowd is loud, they're, they're happy, they're joyful. And uh, Jesus, he, was, he never really said, uh, said a word when this was happening. He, was, he never boasted and uh, he was a humble man. He was, uh, he was, a, he was a man that uh, didn't boast. And uh, so let's just look at those verses as well this morning. Um, in verse 3 of uh, chapter, uh, or in Isaiah 42, verse 3, it talks about this, the servant being very gentle. He won't even break off a bruised reed that is bent over. In other words, he's going he's gonna to support the weak. He's going to mend the brokenhearted. And uh, there's a story that kind of illustrates this a little bit. I'm just going to read it, in, and it's called uh, a, pig, a Piggyback Servant. It says, uh, On a trip to Israel, our church group had walked about 30 minutes to go to a site. A woman in the group slipped off and fell. She was immediately in a great deal of pain, learning later that she had broken a bone in her foot. The concerned group began discussing the dilemma of getting her back on the bus. Then Bill stepped forward and lowered himself to, to his hands and knees, indicating that he would carry her. When the woman had securely attached, attached to Bill's back, he stood up. He carried her piggyback style to the bus. Telling the story at Bill's celebration, our preacher concluded, Bill is one who comes alongside others and carries their burdens. And I think this uh, story really illustrates how Jesus is gonna. Jesus wants to carry our burdens if we let him, and uh, how he was that servant that came to 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 carry our burdens. In the fourth verse of in uh, chat in Isaiah forty two, it talks about uh, bringing forth justice to the earth, and you know this isn't going to be. This is a huge task, and uh, it's something that uh, it's going to take a total uh, different kind of power than what our leaders uh, of today. Are, are, or do or what the governments may, may use. It's going to be, it's going to be a huge task, but yet Jesus is going to, to bring justice to this earth. In verse eight, uh, it talks about, uh, the servant not, that isn't going to give in to any of his glory or praise to idols. And, uh, the question I have for, for each one of us this morning is, uh, what are the best ways for Christians to guard against glorifying anything or anyone except God? How do we put God first? in our lives today in 2020. I'd like to read uh, uh, Mark 10 verses 35 to 44 for, for a bit of a devotional this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to that. That's Mark 10, um, 35 to 44. And this is uh, talking about Jesus, or Jesus teaching about serving others. It says, uh, Then Jesus and John, his, the, sons, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, We want you to do for us whatever we ask. Well, what do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. Those places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indigent with Jesus and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord is lorded over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So those verses uh, tell us that uh, Jesus did not just come to be served, but to serve. And I guess the challenge um, is, is to us today is how do we serve? What do we do um, today to serve others? And I believe there's going to be many, many opportunities over the next little while to, to be a servant, to, to serve others as we go through these, uh, these trying times in our lives. Most businesses or organizations or institutions, they measure um, success or greatness or high personal achievement in, in different ways than, than what Christ would. And, um, 
you know, we think of in the, in the corporate world, maybe moving up the ladder in a, in a job situation, that's maybe what we consider high achievement. But in Christ's kingdom, service is the way to get ahead. And so rather than seeking to have our needs met, we, we need to look for ways that you can minister to the needs of others. And uh, as I said before, I believe there's going to be many opportunities for us to do that uh, in, the, in the next little while. Um, another verse I'd like to read is in Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4. It says, uh, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only at your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. So I think those verses go a long way. If we can, uh, if we can put those verses to action in our own lives, I believe uh, we will be really blessed and we can do a, be a real big, a real great blessing to others as well. Um, in Matthew 25, verse 40, um, this is uh, at the final judgment where it says, uh, The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever we did for the, one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. And um, it's not easy to surrender to ourself. Um, if we look at our surrounding culture, everything is, it's all about us. It's all about us getting ahead. And um, God calls us to pattern our lives after his servant, Jesus. And, uh, you know, how, how will we follow that example of Jesus? How will we serve today? And uh, just the challenge again is uh, how do we be a servant uh, to others uh, in the coming weeks ahead? Let's pause for a word of prayer. Lord, I just thank you again for another, uh, another day that you've blessed us with, Lord. And uh, Father, as we uh, look around us, um, we just uh, sometimes wonder if the, if the world is falling apart in front of our eyes. And yet, uh, we realize, Lord, that you are in control and uh, help us all to, uh, to uh, look to you for guidance, Lord. Help us not to get discouraged. Help us not to, uh, to have fear, Lord, but to cast our anxieties on you, Lord. Father, I just uh, pray for those that are, that are uh, not well this morning, those around us, Lord, uh, some of us that we don't even know that are, that are maybe sick with this COVID-19 and just ask that you would just bless, bless them in a special way. Father, I just pray that you would just be with our government leaders as they make many, many decisions. Some of them are really tough decisions this morning and uh, in the coming weeks. We just thank you for the good leaders that we have, Lord, and uh, we just ask that you would just bless them in a special way. Just be with our industry leaders as well as they make tough decisions and uh, maybe decisions that they just uh, aren't sure if they're making the right ones, Father, but we just ask that you would just uh, guide them as well. Father, we just ask that you would uh, be with... Uh, our church family, Lord, maybe those that are lonely, those that are in nursing homes, Father, I just ask that you would just uh, put a, a special touch on them, cast all any anxiety or any fear away, Father, and uh, you would just uh, protect each of, each one of us from this, uh, from this virus, Lord. We know that uh, you are the great physician, you are the great healer, you are the great protector, Father, and we just ask that you would just uh, be near us uh, in a very special way. Father, just uh, pray that you would just help us to to be a, a servant, Lord, to others around us. Help us to serve as you served um, when you came into this earth. And Lord, help us to uh, be ready for when you come back again to bring justice to this earth. Father, we just thank you for the, that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, with, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you this morning.